praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Praise the Lord. We give God glory. We bless praise you, Him. We worship hallelujah. Him. We bless His name. Thank you, Father. Come on, saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, praise is beautiful on yes. you. Yes. Hallelujah. That's the finishing touches on your outfit. Praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Thank you, Father. Bless you, God. Oh, we praise you. We lift up holy hands because you're worthy yes, God. to be Hallelujah. praised. You are a keeper. You never sleep, nor do you slumber. God, Hallelujah. we praise your name. You're so yes, faithful God. to us. We give you the fruit of our Hallelujah. lips. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Come on. You can stand. Thank you, you can Father. lift your hands. Hallelujah. You can open up your mouth. Holly, open up your heart. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Let a divine exchange Hallelujah. take place today. Bless you, the God. Bible in Romans 12 verses 1 and 2 says, I beseech Hallelujah. thee, brethren, Bless you, God. You, that you present yourselves a living sacrifice Hallelujah. unto God. Hallelujah. Holy and Hallelujah. acceptable unto him. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, this is your reasonable service. And Hallelujah. when we do that, when we present ourselves to him, we are able to prove what is a perfect Yes. What is that acceptable? What is Hallelujah. that goodwill? Hallelujah, Hallelujah to Jesus. Lord. All because we presented ourselves to him. Glory to his name. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you Hallelujah. We love you today, Jesus. Hallelujah. We just want to talk to you. We want to tell you thank you for keeping Bless us. Hallelujah. We want to thank you for your mercy. We want to thank you for your grace. Yes, we want to thank you for your love. Hallelujah. We want to thank you for crowning us with we tender mercy and loving kindness. Hallelujah. We want to thank you for your goodness. 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 God, you spared me. God, you kept me. Come on. Y'all start making it personal. Start making it personal. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you, Father. I bless your name. I bless your name. I bless your name. Hallelujah to Jesus. I bless your name. Hallelujah. We came out to praise you, Lord. We came out to exalt you, Jesus. To glorify your Lord, we came out to extol you, oh God. We came out to tell you how beautiful you are, how lovely you are, how wonderful you are. In the mighty name of Jesus, we're grateful to you, Lord. We're grateful to you, Lord. You kept our loved ones, you're watching over our children, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh God, we thank you for the bloodstained banner. We thank you for the cross of Christ. We thank you that you are Jehovah Nisi. You are our victor. You are our victor. You are the bloodstained banner. Hallelujah. Oh God, we thank you that by your blood and by the cross of Christ, you have annihilated every evil assignment against us. God, I thank you that according to your word in Colossians 2.15, you got the keys from, from Satan. You went down to hell and you got the keys from him and you paraded him through the streets in victory. God, I thank you that because of the cross, you can check it out. It's in the word. It's in the word. It's in Colossians 2 verse 15. Oh my God. And Father, because you disarmed the enemy, you disarmed the enemy on my behalf. His roar is weak. He has nothing against me. He's a lion with no teeth. Yes. Lord, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, rejoice. Because you have an enemy that pursues you. That really can do you no harm. Hallelujah to Jesus. Oh, my God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your resurrected power. We thank you, God, for your love. We thank you for your divine plan for us. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, you tell us to give thanks. For this is your will concerning us in Christ Jesus. In everything, give thanks. In every situation that you find yourself in. Give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. And as you give thanks, your testimony will be that in these, all these things, I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who loved me. I'm an overcomer. 
overcomer. I flow in victory because of the cross of Christ Jesus, because of the blood that was shed for me. Hallelujah to Jesus. God, I thank you that I live in a country where I can worship you openly, where I can glorify your name. Nobody is coming to get us because we're calling on the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for that liberty. We thank you for that liberty. And we even thank you for spiritual liberty. We thank you for the freedom to engage in righteousness. We thank you for the freedom to be holy. But we will not use our freedom as a liberty and as an occasion to sin. We will not use our freedom as an opportunity to sin. But God, we will use the freedom that you gave us for an opportunity to show grace, to show love, to worship you, to live righteously, to follow after you, to pursue you. And as we pursue God, he comes running after us. And there's a divine clash. And we run into his open arms. And he embraces us with his love. Oh God, we rejoice that you embrace us with your love. We need your love today. Oh my God, we thank you that the love is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost whom you have given to us, oh God. And when the world seems cold, oh Lord, we thank you for your love that keeps us. We thank you for your love that affirms us. We thank you for your word, your love that encourages us. We thank you for your love that draws us nearer to you. We thank you for your love that has rescued us. We thank you for your love that has redeemed us. Hallelujah. It has done so for our whole household, for our children, oh God. Yay, God. You got a deliverance for our children. You got a deliverance for our husbands. You got a deliverance for wives, oh God. For you love families, oh Lord. You love families, oh God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We hold up the bloodstained banner and we tell the devil, you cannot have our children. You cannot have our families. You cannot have our church family. We expose an assignment of the enemy against the family and against the church. And we expel it by the cross of Christ and the shed blood of Jesus. And we establish truth. Hallelujah. For the Bible says the seed of the righteous are blessed. Hallelujah. And he shows his mercy to a thousand generations. The Bible says the, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. So we establish that truth today. And we expect, oh God, we expect the spoils. We expect to see what you said out of your word, oh God. That's why we worship you, Lord. That's why we love you, God. That's why we magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah to Jesus. Our coming is not in vain. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you. And we are changed in your presence. Hallelujah to Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. We turn it over to the pulpit. We thank God. Thank you for your presence, Lord. everybody can we just take a few minutes and stay right there for the Lord you are good and you're so merciful to us and we give your name praise God father we thank you even now because you are worthy of the praise father we bless you and we give you glory today. There's a song I've been singing all week. And it just simply says, You're a good, good father. Because who you are. And I'm loved by you. I tell you, sometimes we don't feel love. But I had to 
remind myself that he is a good, good father. Oftentimes we look for love in the wrong places. <laughs> and all I kept saying, you're a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm loved by you. That's who I am. So I'm telling you today, we are loved by God. We are loved by him. Even sometimes when we don't even see where we're going, but that was just a reminder to me, God, you're steering me in the right way. Even when things look a little foggy, he just let me know. And I'm loved by you, yes. That's who I am. That's who you are. You're a good, good father. Mm. That's all I got to say. <laughs> just to remind me. And the worship I want to uh, open up with says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. It says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the lord is good can i say that for the lord is good you're gonna get it for the lord is good his mercies is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations and I'm loved by you yeah yeah mm, mm, mm. you're a good good father yeah and I'm loved by you yeah yeah let us pray Heavenly Father, we come this morning knowing that you are a good, good Father. Knowing that we are loved by you. Father, we ask you even now to search our hearts. Anything, God, that's not like you. We ask you, God, to have mercy and to deliver us right now in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we come with thanksgiving in our hearts we come God turning this service into your hands father we come realizing God that you are in control of everything we come looking for miracles somebody need a miracle today somebody needs healing today somebody needs breakthrough today Somebody needs a father today. Somebody needs a mother today. God have your way. And we know we're loved by you. God, we ask you to look on your woman servant today. She has already prepared. But we ask you to bless her, God. Bring her down into your storehouse and bring her back up allow her to speak with clarity devil you already defeated because the word is coming the word has already been spoken she's just the mouthpiece we even ask you to look on our pastor today bless him and his family oh god touch them in a mighty mighty way Look on the congregation 
here and online today, God. We ask you even to meet the needs of your people all over this land and country right now in the name of Jesus. We trust. We believe. We act upon what you have already spoken. And we thank you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The scripture I will be reading today is Psalms 46. In the entirety chapter, verse. And it says in the New King James Version, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though it waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, Sila. There is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be removed. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nation rage the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come behold the works of the Lord who has made desolation in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariots in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will exalt among the nation. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. And that is the word of the Lord today. At this time, we will have a song of praise from our very own vessels of praise. Sing unto the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We've already gone into worship, but we're going to continue into our worship. We want the glory of the Lord to rise among us in this place. For we bless the Lord on this morning because he is good and his uh -huh. mercy endureth forever. We bless our God. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us let the songs of our lord rise among us let the praises of our king rise among us let it rise let the praises of the lord let it rise among us let the praises of the lord let it rise among us let the joy of the lord rise among us let it rise
Let it rise. There are some things you want God to rise in our lives. Let it rise. Let the song of my life, the words that we speak, let it rise. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. <laughs> Oh, let it rise. Mm. Oh, oh, let it rise. Let your glory, 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 let it rise. Let your healing, let it rise. Let your love, let it rise. Let your peace, let it rise. Rise, let your joy, let it rise, let your, let your, let your, let your, let your healing, let it rise, oh, let it rise, oh. Let it rise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Those words got so much power to it. As the trustees come, it just says, let your glory, let it rise. Let your healing let it rise let your peace let it rise amen amen good morning church good morning good to see everyone today it's offering time amen. so we have the beautiful and lovely Minister Diane Holmes bringing forth the word today. So, yes, yes, yes. So, our trustee Irma Smith will be holding the basket for Minister Holmes. Please bless her as she, we know she's going to bless us with the word today. Trustee Michelle Jones will be holding general offering, and our deacon will be holding for the benevolent offering. Tithes are in the tithe boxes in the middle. And I will be here collecting for debit and credit cards if you have that desire. So we thank you and let the, oh, we're also going to be doing either side. No surprise there, right? And uh, we thank you and let the Lord lead you in your giving this morning. It's in the hands of the ushers. Among us, let the glory of the Lord rise among us, let the praises of our King rise among us, let it rise, let the joy of the Lord rise among us, let the joy of the Lord 
rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the peace of the Lord, let the peace of the Lord rise among us. Let the peace of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us let it rise let the joy of the lord let the joy of the lord rise among us let the joy of the lord rise among us let the praises of our king rise among us let it rise let the peace of the lord let the peace of the Lord rise among us. Let the peace of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. We cry, oh, oh, oh let it rise. songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord, let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord Rise among us, let the praises of our King rise among us, let it rise. Let the peace of the Lord, let the peace of the Lord rise among us, let the peace of the Lord rise among us, let the praises of our King rise among us, let it rise. We cry, oh, oh, let it rise. We cry, oh, oh, let it Sounds of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the sound of the Lord, let the sound of the Lord rise among us. Let the sounds of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us let it rise let the dance of the lord let the dance of the lord rise among us let the dance of the lord rise among us let the praises of our king rise among us let it rise let the glory of the lord let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. We cry, oh, We 
Praise God. At this time, we will hear our announcements coming from our own sister, Sharon Forbes. Our pastoral greetings will be coming from our first lady, Valerie Hardy, in that order. Amen. Good morning, church. Please let us hear the announcements. We would like to say happy 92nd birthday to Sister Frances Payne on the 10th. <laughs> Brother Antoine Hines on the 10th. Mother Jamie Bradley on the 11th. Sister Tanya Jeter Coleman on the 12th. And Sister Helen Bromell on the 12th. Happy birthday to you all of your family and your church family. Happy 13th wedding anniversary to Brother Marty and Sister Glennie Roberts on the 10th. Okay, um, support, St. Matthew's Church supports Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We take this time to recognize and show our appreciation to all who are breast cancer survivors and those who continue the fight. We pay homage to those who have passed but never stop fighting. Let's show our support. We're at Bre Breast Cancer Awareness Ribbon, the month of October, located in the basket in the vestibule. Thank you to Sister Helen Bromell for making our ribbons. Take a picture in front of our breast cancer awareness wall. Learn more about breast cancer awareness by stopping by our information table. And if you would like to make a donation, please see Sister Lynette Secret Johnson, myself, or Sister Latricia Bomell. All monies will be all monies raised will be turned into the breast cancer awareness campaign, American Cancer Society. So, Sister Secret, can you stand? So those who don't know you or know who you are. That's our tech lady over there. The aggregation conference choir rehearsal dates Tuesday, October the 12th and the 19th, 6 to 7 p.m. St. Mary's Church. And actually St. Mary's is now at their new location at 1... 266 Shelton Avenue, across from Lincoln Bassett School. So congratulations to them. St. Matthew's Home Mission Ministry Annual Day, Sunday morning worship, 
experience will be October the 24th at 10 a.m. Our guest preacher will be co-pastor Kim Cotton of Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church in Middletown, Connecticut. So we hope you all will come to the morning service on October the 24th. The fifth annual Julie Bell Cotton Food Drive to benefit St. Matthew's Food Pantry, the church that cares. Please contribute to our non-perishable food drive and drop off donations. Sunday, place items in the designated boxes in the coat room. Wednesdays between the hours of 10 and 3 p.m. You can also contact Brother Quinn and arrange a drop off time. The food pantry has special requests for items to make a Thanksgiving basket, boxes of stuffing, and cans of cranberry sauce. So you can call Trustee Irma 203-777-4072 or Brother Quinn 203-908-6728. Open enrollment and Medicare options are extremely complicated. Meet a specialist and get all your questions answered. Join us for the 30 minute session will be the Zoom ID is 881-9736-0536 and the passcode is 260588. And this is uh, will be Wednesday, October the 13th at 7.30 p.m. Again, the Zoom ID is 881-9736-0536. Passcode 260588. 7 p.m. And other announcements. I already congratulated St. Mary's. Um, Sister Grace Bird was in the hospital. Sister Georgiana Moran is still in the hospital. Sister Frenchie Vaughn is in the hospital. Minister Angie Pemberton lost her cousin in North Carolina. Sister Mahogany Dorberry lost her great grandmother here in the city. And keep Mother Ricks in prayer. She is under the weather. And also in sympathy, Miss Helen Deer, a longtime entrepreneur in our New Haven community, and sister of Sister Peggy Jones and aunt of Brother Gregory Jones, passed on October the 7th. Please reach out to the family and keep them in your prayers. So, Sister Helen, um, she lives at 316 Shelton Avenue. And if you would like to um, reach out to Sister Peggy Jones, she is on 18 Pond Street in New Haven. So let's keep all our bereaved families in prayer. I have a card. Thank you to Pastor Hardy and Lady Hardy and St. Matthew's Church. Thank you for the beautiful plant cards, phone calls, and prayers for the passing of my brother. Thank you for being the church that cares, and may God continue to bless you. Your thoughtfulness is a gift that I will always treasure. Love, Mother Kirby. Don't forget Sanctuary Sunday next week. So we're looking for all our members to come to the sanctuary so we can see your lovely faces. Um, visitors. We have visitors out here. I know we have two. Um, Sister Melissa Agnew and Sister Lisa Jackson. So they are here. They were here for their 40th class reunion, and they don't look a day over 30. So we are glad to see you. Um, Sister Melissa is the daughter of Sister Dorothy Agnew. Oh, Sister Agnew is back there. And also, um, I'll do this now, but I have a note from Sister... Connie Mewborn, and she passed me a note that she would like to be reinstated. So can you stand, <laughs> Sister Connie? So she's coming to be reinstated. On behalf of Pastor Hardy and First Lady Hardy in the St. Matthews Church family, we thank you for visiting St. Matthews. Please come again.
Amen, amen, and praise God. It's so good to see everyone here. Give yourselves a hand. Come on. Amen, amen. It's so glad to see everyone in the sanctuary, and I'm, I'm standing on behalf of Pastor, um, who is taking a rest today. Our daughter is home, so we spent the weekend with her, and we're going to be taking her back. So um, I just want to stand and give greetings on his behalf. Uh, please no, make a, take note of all the notices that have been given. We, we acknowledge those birthdays and anniversaries. We're so thankful for you. Um, and also remember that it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we know those who have gone on, and we know those who are fighting in faith, who are dealing with such a diagnosis, so we will keep our prayers for them. You know, it's also Domestic Violence Month as well, and if um, that is also some, something that we need to pray for and be mindful of, and um, if anyone has gone through that or you know someone that is going through that reach out to someone so that you can get help because you are worth being nurtured and cared for amen amen god didn't create any punching bags hallelujah to jesus um that's right amen amen we welcome our visitors we're so glad that you're here with us today and those who are yes And, and uh, our sister who wants to be reinstated, we're so happy for you and we're rejoicing and we're glad that you're home. <laughs> um, I just want to say that our musicians are doing an excellent job. Yes. Yes. Help, helping to set the atmosphere. And I thank God for our ministers and all that are here. And our sister. I have a special nickname for her. I won't say it right now, <laughs> but it's good. And I know she's going to bring the word. She has such a unique way of delivering the word. She has a joyful personality and she wants you to get it. She wants you to get it. I mean, she will let that light shine. Even if look her, the Bible says are, are beautiful are the feet of those who proclaim the gospel. And then it also says that, you know, our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel. And she was in the store one, one time and was able to witness because someone was looking at her feet. See that, that that's a preacher that that's the preacher right there. So she's flowing in her anointing, even in the grocery store. So we thank God for that. Cause that's the church. We have to flow everywhere we go. Amen. We, we ought to put that on a t-shirt. I'm a Christian and I flow everywhere I go. Amen. So I'm so glad to be here. I will not be able to stay for the word because we're going to go take our baby back. And so I want to be there with her, but I am, um, encouraging my sister and I thank God for her. And, um, I thank God for seeing each and every one of you and let's make every Sunday be sanctuary Sunday. Amen. Oh, and now we'll hear from the vessels of praise. <laughs> and let's encourage our sister Jackie. She's doing Hallelujah. a wonderful job. Hallelujah. You know, the, the Lord is stretching us. Yes, he is. And, and, and one thing this season did was cause, it, it did an expansion in the kingdom and it caused us, each and every one of us, to stretch out and walk on the water in different ways. And we're, we're the Lord is, this is the year of more. And he is uh, maturing us and ministering us and moving us and, and having us operate in ways that we never thought we would Amen. before. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Bless God. As we prepare for the word of God in our hearts, we open our hearts up unto God. We're going to tell the Lord we love him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you. Yeah. I adore you. With my whole heart, I will bless you. Lord, I love you. I adore you. With my whole heart, I will bless you, Lord. Lord, I love you. I adore you. Yes, yes. With my whole heart, I will bless you. 
of our God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless our God. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. you can't even say nothing but Lord I love you You, there's not enough words in the Webster dictionary to even express how you can feel about God sometimes you can't even say that you just get this in your throat and all can come out is you're good I love you it's amazing but you can be all night long and still there's not enough words to express how you feel about him I am so grateful and thankful. Have your seat. Rest your feet. It's okay. I am so grateful and so thankful that God can sit there and look at little old me and trust me with his word. I don't take it lightly. I don't take it lightly when your pastor texts you and say it. He don't see your face, but you like this. Uh Uh-uh. Don't tell pastor that first lady. Anyway, you say, okay, pastor, I will. But I am grateful that we have leaders that is after God's heart. The shepherd of this house and first lady and family, we honor them on today. And I honor my church family, the beloved. Now, all you out there on Zoom and on the phone, if you were here, we do it better together. Amen. And to my co-laborers, I can't do without them. I'm telling you, these, I mean, you know, okay, I love you. I love you. Amen. Amen. So did I forget anybody? Text, love you. Music, love you. Right? My whole church family, love you. Amen. Amen. So let us go into the word. Let me pray. See, did you remind me of that? Father, I just thank you for this day. I thank you that you allow me to speak your word, God. I need you, Lord. Have your way, Father. Let this word edify the church, multiply in us, and you'll be glorified to the world. Have your way in me, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we will go to the word. Mark 9, 17 to 26, New Living Translation. It's a little lengthy, but it's good. One of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, Teacher, I brought my son so you can heal him. He is possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk. And whenever the spirit sees him, It throws him violently to the ground. Then he foam at the mouth and grind his teeth and become rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't do it. Jesus said to them, you faithless people, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought the boy. When the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the boy It threw the child into a violent convulsion, and he fell to the ground, writhing and foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy father. He replied, since he was a little boy, the spirit often throws him into a fire or water and tries to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. What do you mean if I can, Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes. The father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the crowd of onlookers was growing, he rebuked the evil spirit. Listen, 
you spirit that make this boy unable to hear and speak. He said, I command you to come out of this child and never enter again. Then the spirit screamed, get that last hit, huh? And threw the boy into another violent convulsion and left him. The boy appeared to be dead. A murmur ran through the crowd as people said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and helped him to his feet and he stood up. Now, if I have a title for you this morning, do you really believe? Do you really believe? In our scripture reading, we have a couple of things going on. A distracted father, a demonic possessed boy, and overwhelmed disciples. Mark tells this story and let us know the battle with Satan is difficult at times. It's an ongoing struggle in our lives and sometimes we are faced with something that seems to overpower our faith. Amen. So we know that the disciples had power and authority because if we go back, it'll tell us in Mark 6, verse 7. He, and he called his 12 disciples together and began sending them out two by two, giving them authority to cast out evil spirits. Now, if you walk down to verse 12, he says, so the disciples went out telling everyone they met to repent of their sin and turn to God. And they cast out many demons and healed many sick people, anointing them with the olive oil. But hmm, in Mark 9, verse 19, Jesus said to them, you faithless people, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. Some scholars say he was scolding or rebuking. Some said he was disappointed. I believe he was disappointed with a level of frustration. Jesus had, just came, come, Jesus had just come back from Mount Tabor. That's what some call it. We know it as the Mount of Transfiguration. He took Peter, James, and John up the mountain to pray. And while praying, his personal appearance was changed into the glorified form. And his clothing became dazzling white. They just had a sneak preview of his coming, of his glorifying, of his glorification and his enthronement as king of kings and lords of lords. Also, Moses and Elijah appeared and talked with Jesus about the death that would soon take place. His time was winding down. He knew he loved us so much he would have to suffer for the whole world. So when they returned from the Mount of Transfiguration, he was confronted with this situation. The scribes were attacking the disciples. The crowd was looking for a miracle and the evil spirit was trying to destroy the boy. After all Jesus had taught them, after all Jesus had taught the disciples and all they witnessed, I believe he was disappointed with a level of frustration. And you know why I say that? Because as I was reading this, the Lord brought something back to my memory. I'm telling you, he is so good. It just hit me. And it, he told me about a situation at work. And I remember in 2020, besides all the COVID was going on, we had a new supervisor that was learning the job. People have retired. So now we have a few people left doing the same workload. And he gave us two new people. They were older in age and the computer wasn't their friend. So they have to learn this program to do their job. All of 2020, I kid you not, they was asking the same questions. And I mean, it was the same questions over and over. And there was many days I just sat there, Father, give me patience, help me, Lord, help me. I really did. Now here it is 2021 and we get two more people and they're young and they caught that program within months. And they got it. And these two people were still asking the same question. So one day they caught me <clears throat> and I was sitting at my desk and they had a problem. And I don't know, I didn't let the Holy Ghost come in. So they was like, Diane. And I was like, Shh. and before I knew it, I turned around and said, you gotta get this. I will not be here. 
My time is winding down. Give me the number. I will fix it. Just the same thing Jesus has said. And I, re- I said, Lord, I remember that. But I also remember you told me to go apologize. So anyway, so I, <laughs> I had to. So I remember being so frustrated because you know what? In my heart, I wanted them to get this before I left. I really did. So I did go over and I said, listen, guys, you, you really got to get this. Because I am, I'm, I'm believing, I got months left. You have to get it. And their personality clashed with the other one, so they didn't get help from the other co-workers. So I said, who are you going to ask? Who's going to help you? And they knew that the supervisor had my phone number, right? And they knew a couple of other people then. They looked at me like, can I call you? And I looked at them with the smiles and myself and said, nope. Sat back in my seat. So I don't know what was going on with the disciples that day. But they did ask the question, why couldn't they cast the demon out? Jesus told them, this kind comes forth by nothing but by praying and fasting. So depending on what spiritual attack that you may encounter, it may be suddenly with one prayer, and then there's times you need great faith, fasting, and praying. Through though faith and Jesus Christ, we had the victory over spiritual battles, sin, and temptation. Faith is a gift from God, and growing in faith is a constant process of daily renewing our trust in Jesus. We know that anything is possible if we believe, because nothing is too difficult for God. Amen? So that's a good place for my first point, unbelief. The man in the story can go on record and tell the whole world, I know what Jesus can do. But he had an issue that we all can relate to. He said in verse 21, how long has this been asked? Uh, How long has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy. And he replied, since he was a little boy and the spirit often throw him into the fire or into the water trying to kill him. Do you know that Satan's trying to kill us? Okay. And he said, have mercy on us and help us if you can. Today's frustration, today's agony, today's illness, today's hurt, sometimes can hit so hard, we take our eyes off of God. Doubt comes in, unbelief, lack of faith, hopeless, I'm done, I can't take it no more, Lord have mercy on me. So this is what this boy was, this is what the father was saying, help us if you can. And Jesus said, what do you mean if I can? At first, I thought Jesus was, like, getting smart with him, but it wasn't that. The if wasn't in regards to what Jesus can do. The if was in regards to the man's faith. He had a hard time believing. Amen. And this is why Jesus said next, anything is possible if a person believes. Do you really believe? Now, if we be honest, this has happened to us. And how many times God said, what do you mean you're giving up? What do you mean you're throwing in the towel? What do you mean is not going to happen? What do you mean it's impossible? Matthew said in chapter 17, Jesus said, because you have so little faith, truly I tell you, if you have a faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. He said their faith was too small. Now, this is not to judge anyone about their faith. God has given to each a measure of faith to use for him. It's the power of God plus our faith that moves mountains. The mustard seed was the smallest particle imaginable. Jesus said that even faith as small or undeveloped as a mustard seed will be sufficient. So if you're facing a problem that seems as big as a mountain and it seems like we don't have enough faith to follow Christ in the moment, take your eyes off the mountain. And turn your eyes to Christ and ask him for more faith. Luke said it like this. Simple. Lord, increase our faith. 
just like that. Lord, increase our faith. I dare you to ask. And it shall be given to you. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. We call those things be not as though they were. Look to the hill which come at your help. Our help come from the Lord. When we put our trust in God and believe his promises are true, then all things he promised are possible. God is a mighty God. Nothing is impossible with him. He can move a mountain. Make the sun stand still. Heal the sick, deliver and set the captive free. His name's above all names. He's worthy of our praise. Mighty are the works of his hands. If I can talk to Moses right now and get him to be a witness and tell him it's his English translation, he said this. Fear not, stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. Do you really believe? How about is he working some stuff out right now? How about you might have something going on before you go home? How about he might work or fix something out by tomorrow? He is working stuff out for you. Amen. So God brought the Israelites into the promised land. He led them out of slavery and into freedom just as he promised. So if you think back for a moment. God has done some amazing things in your life. He may have performed a miracle of healing. He might have delivered you from bondage or mental illness, addiction or sickness, and brought you into your own promised land. Some of us can write a book of the times we had a Red Sea situation. So take time today to remember the mighty things God has done for you. Praise him. Commit to him that you will never forget the amazing things he has done for you. Amen. Your praise may sound like this in Psalms 9, 1 and 2. I will praise you, O oh Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praises to your name, O oh Most High. And if that's not good, you may sound like Psalm 34. I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let exalt his name together. And I know I went through some heartbreaks and tragedy. And I know it wasn't nobody but God that brought me out. Because if God is before you, who can be against you? I sought the Lord and he heard my cry. Just when I thought it was over, he stepped in right on time. It's not over until God said it's over. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. It's time to turn to the Lord with confidence and believe that he will strengthen our faith. We are disciples, Jesus ambassadors. The world need to see we are credited to do the will of God. That's a good place for my second point. Spiritual credentials. Yesterday's misery can be today's credentials. Yesterday, <laughs> go ahead. Yesterday's miseries can be today's credentials. Now, credentials often refer to academic or educational qualifications, such as degrees or diploma that you may have completed or partially completed. Well, I have credentials. I've been taught by the best teacher in the world counseled by the best counselor in the world, and my father paid for the education, which I achieved the BA, born again degree. Let me tell you something. I have a past that would tell you while I was yet in my sin, Jesus died for me. I can tell you the stories of the wars, physical and spiritual. I have a record when the enemy arrested and prosecute me, but let the record show today that I am free. I had training, education, wisdom, knowledge, and experience, and I'm qualified to tell you what Jesus can do. I have spiritual credentials. Amen? Now, if I can give you the definition of credentials, it's a qualification, achievement, 
personal qualities or an aspect of person's background, typically when used to indicate that they are suitable for something. Question on the table. Are you qualified? Have you achieved anything? Are you suitable to tell the world that God is good? Then you have spiritual credentials. So there are many witnesses in the Bible, but if I could use Apostle Paul, his crimes of the past became his credentials to speak about how Christ can change a life, even a life like his. He went from Saul to Paul, and throughout his journey, Paul had many success and he had many hardship. But no matter what he was facing, Paul would tell you the truth about what's going on, right? But he always put in his letters, hope, comfort, and assurance. Amen. So Paul said these words in 2 Corinthians. Even when we are weighted down with trouble, it is for your comfort and salvation. For when we are self-comforted, we are certainly comfort you. So we comfort each other with the comfort we have received. The tragedies of our life becomes credentials to minister to other people and their tragedies. We are here to comfort and support one another. We all have been through some storms, but they are not in vain. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. Amen. Galatians 6, 1 and 2. And I saw this in the Passion Translation. So I'm going to say it passionately. My beloved friends, if you see a believer who is overtaken with fault, the one who is in the spirit should seek to restore him in the spirit of gentleness. But keep watch over your own heart so that you won't be tempted to exalt yourself over him. Love empowers us to fulfill the law of the anointed one as we carry each other's troubles. We will not sit and watch Satan kill, steal, and destroy our family, church family, friends, and all thy neighbors. Jesus said, I have life. I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. Amen. So I'm not going to be before you long. I'm getting there. I'm on point three. What seems dead is not dead. So in verse 25, when Jesus saw the crowd of the onlookers were growing, he rebuked the evil spirit. See, you notice that? He said, as they were growing, he said, this is what I'm going to do it for you. He said, listen. And that's all he had to say. Listen. You spirit that make this boy unable to hear and speak. He said, I command you to come out this child and never enter again. That's, that's just his word. That's what he spoke. I command you to come out and never enter again. And then, you know, the spirit screamed and threw the boy into a violent convulsion and left him. See, the spirit talking about, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to get that last hit on you, right? But you know. And the boy appeared dead. And this is the crowd still looking. They murmuring. They look around. He's dead. I mean, you know, this is what Jesus did. He's dead. But Jesus took, put the boy up by his hand. He stood up. And he helped them, right? So what seemed dead is not dead. We know God spoke and the earth was formed. Jesus says, listen, you evil spirit. He spoke and it was done. There is life and death and the power of the tongue. Speak the words over your life. Now, Kiki Shea, I hope I'm saying that right, had this song. It keeps happening. You, you, hear it, you heard it. She said, my seed is blessed. And it made me think, I never seen the righteous forsaken, nor they see breaking um, bacon bread. What about the seed that you put in good soil? You're gonna have a harvest if you faint not. And you know what? I'm a witness. I'm gonna tell you the harvest is coming. Cause believe me, I picked it up the other day and it came to me at my house. When you put that seed in good soil, believe me, it's coming. It's coming. And let me tell you, this is the year of more. God's going to give you more. This year ain't over yet. So the song said, my seed is blessed. My money is blessed. My body is blessed. It keeps happening for me. I, I'm covering my family, making better decisions, 
destroying every addiction. It keeps happening for me. So you keep dreaming. You keep praying. You keep believing. Stand on the word of God. Stand still when he tell you to and walk when he command you to walk. So as I get ready to close, I got to say a little something, something to you right here. What man think are impossible, but with God, things are all possible. When man says dead, God says alive. When man says sick, God says heal. When man says no, God says yes. When man says close, God says open. When man say deny, God says approve. When man say rejected, God says accepted. When man says a mess, God says a message. When man says a problem, God says promising. Man says bondage, God says freedom. Man says weak, God says strong. Man says loser, God says winner. Man says impossible, God says possible. Man says defeated. God said you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Do you really believe? And if I can steal this from pastor, I hope he ain't looking. Ah, man have word for Jesus is the word. Amen. Do you really believe? Do you really believe? Do you really believe? All you got to do is say, Lord, increase our faith. Increase our faith. And speak the word over your family. Speak the word over your children. Speak the word over your job. Speak the word over your finances. In the name of Jesus. And I didn't keep you long, but I am done. Amen. Amen. Let me just tell you what Jeremiah said. He's another witness. I'm going to let Jeremiah talk if you don't mind. Jeremiah said in these words, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? Amen. Amen. Somebody bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. He's good. He's faithful. He keeps his promise. My Lord, my Lord, I thank you, God. God, I thank you for this day. You're good. And your mercy endures forever. Oh, Jesus, help our unbelief. I feel that some people still got this thing going on. You think it's not going to happen. But if you only believe, he will do it. Ask and you, and it shall be given to him. Listen, all you got to do is say, Lord, increase our faith. And it shall be given to you. I believe this. I believe there's people still saying that it's not going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. This is too hard. There's nothing too hard for God. Let this sink into your soul to know that God is going to do it. He's going to fix it. He has a record and it's good. He's been doing this for millions of years. He don't need any help. He know what to do. He know your situation. He steps into it. He's not, he's not ignoring you. He hasn't forgotten you. He's there all the time. And he will fix it for you. Believe me. I am a witness. Amen. 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 I believe we need the confession. If anyone is out of Christ. And want to come into the ooh, household of faith. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. And give your life to Christ. The one who saved you, the one who loved you, the one that died for you. He's here with open arms for you. All you have to do is repeat this prayer. Dear God, I ask that you forgive me of my sins. You said in your word, if I believe that Jesus died for my sins and that you raised him from the dead, I will be saved. I believe it. And I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I am now saved. Thank you for forgiving me and loving me. We will walk this Christian journey together. Amen. 
And if there's anyone that's spiritually homeless and you need a home, a church home, you are welcome here at St. Matthew. It's not a perfect church, but we do stand on the word of God. We're not perfect people and I haven't met one yet. And if you have, run. Amen. But if you want to join this church, you can email our pastor. It's Pastor Hardy, 1206 at iCloud.com. Phone number 203-584-0579. Or you can come now. Anybody want to join? You can come now. It's a perfect time. A perfect time. Anyone? We all home? Amen. So we're going to get ready to leave. And I'm going to give you the benediction when I find my scripture. I do believe. <laughs> I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Okay, we're uplifting hands. Yeah. If anyone want prayer at the end of service, you can come up. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think or according to the power that worketh in us. Until him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen.